Jackie. Can I have you take a few steps forward so everybody can see just how beautiful you are? Oh, I love it. I love it. How about if you turn this way and then show us your bow? There we go. So she is a female Apache warrior. Ruth is wearing a buckskin blouse over a cloth dress. She has a bow made out of cedar with arrows with turkey feathers. She also has Apache boots, and her outfit was made by her parents and her sisters. Wow. Beautiful. The buckskin dress over the cloth is age-appropriate attire for a young girl. A full buckskin dress isn't worn until a girl's coming of age ceremony. Ruth is an archer, and her attire is honoring her Apache women ancestors who fought and defended their way of life. Beautiful. Can we have you do it? Can we have you turn around for us so we can see everything? Oh wow. Absolutely beautiful. Here, take a few more steps forward and have everybody take another good look at you. Beautiful. Look at that smile. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, thank you, Ruth. This is contestant number one. And now we'd like contestant number two to come on stage. This is, ladies and gentlemen, Kyra Hendren. Put your hands together for her. Come up here, let see your beautiful outfit. The name of her attire is Where the Waters Came Together. She's wearing a blue water comes together dress with weaving tools and a brown diamond twill manta. Turn, turn around, turn around. So beautiful. If you notice as well, too, she's also turning jean. She's wearing a beautiful squash blossom necklace. She has a beautiful, beautiful belt. Look at these beautiful moccasins that she has on. And she's got another bracelet on. Turn around so they can show you one more time. There you go. Can you give them a really big smile? Kyra, thank you. Thank you. Contestant number three, we have Alitama Perkins, who is Eastern Band Cherokee. Alitama, beautiful. You want to take another step forward? Alitama is a member of the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians located in Cherokee, North Carolina. Alitama is wearing 18th century historic Cherokee women's attire and regalia, which consists of a trade shirt made from cotton fabric printed with a blue and maroon um, vines design. This traditional 18th century print would have been created by using the block method and roller printing. She is also wearing a blue wool wrap skirt that hangs at the knees with a drawstring waist. She wears matching side seam leggings adorned with ivory, gold, and burgundy silk ribbons made by her mother, Nicole Warrington. Oh, beautiful! Beautiful! Around her waist, Elitma is wearing a navy blue and red finger woven belt with white gold or white glass pony beads woven into it, creating the arrowhead design and matching leg garters used to hold up her leggings made by Kelly Driver. <laughs> Around her shoulders, she is wearing a feather cape made from wild turkey feathers, which was made by her mother. Beautiful. Can you give us a spin? Across her right shoulder, she is wearing a red blue and blue bandolier bag trimmed with white glass beads, and it features the unbroken friendship design made by Karen George. On her feet, she is wearing front center seam buckskin pucker toe moccasins with red and blue flaps trimmed with white seed beads made by Richard Sanu. Beautiful. Oh, I want some more. Her accessories include a clay bead necklace made by Tommy Wildcat. In her ears, she's wearing round spiral cut earrings made by Brad McMillan. Beautiful. Her skirt and leggings are adorned with silver buckles and brooches featuring a Cherokee floral design. 
The brooches were pinned on the skirt, leggings, and match coats worn by women. Cherokee people began wearing silver in the 1700s and became accomplished silversmiths. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Alitima Perkins. Beautiful. Okay, so we have contestant number four. Hi, Presley. This is Presley Nelson. She is Kiowa, Taos, and Navajo. And she knows what to do. She comes right up the front. So she's got her beautiful Kiowa dress on. She's got some ribbons on her sleeves, and she has a nice dance purse done in Kiowa style. I'm going to hold it up so they can see it. Beautiful. So it's got beadwork on it, and nice medallion, and some nice beads. And so they're, they look lovely when they're dancing, and they swing their beautiful purses. So she has some mink hair ties and a beautiful beaded belt. Let me see what else you have on there. Oh, she's got a little fire bag and a drop. She's got a concho drop also. And she's got an appropriate skirt wrap, which the Kiowa women were always very um, uh, modest people. And, and we always made sure that they were covered. And so they had the, the skirt wraps and that also protected their dresses and their buckskin dresses when they had those too. So you want to turn around, Presley, so we can see the back. So she has another medallion, which is holding her ribbons, and she has a nice feather in her hair, held by a porcupine quill uh, medicine wheel. Thank you, Presley. You look wonderful. Come to turn around and say hi to everybody. So this is Presley Nelson. Thank you. Next, we'd like to invite Kennedy Nelson to the stage. Come up, Kennedy. Come on. Let us see you. My goodness, you're beautiful. There you go. You show them your beautiful smile out here. There she is. Kennedy is Kiowa Taos and Navajo, and she has a red cloth dress on with beaded moccasins. She has a beaded belt with crayon in her knife case possibility bag. Very cool. She has a beaded necklace. She has an eagle feather in her hair and a hawk feather fan. Can you turn her around so they can see the back? Beautiful beauty medallion. Turn around again and show them your smile again. One more time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kennedy Nelson. Oh, okay, so number six. This is Peyton. This is my niece, Peyton, growing thunder at Fogarty. This is my brother's daughter. She's wearing a traditional Sioux-style outfit, done in pink beadwork, and her cape is a little bit different than what we're usually wearing, uh, dentalian capes, but this one has elk, bone elk's teeth on it and a lot of silver um, sequin work, and she has a bone breastplate, so, um, some beaded necklaces and medallions, and you want to turn around? She has a traditional ribbon skirt dress on with wing sleeves. And um, usually our tribal style, when we make our ribbon dresses, you'll see them everywhere now, but um, ours were not color matching. So we didn't, uh, we just used whatever color you grabbed first. And so they weren't matchy matchy. And that's, that's our tribal style from Fort Peck, Assiniboine Sioux tribes. So, um, yeah, and she has fully beaded moccasins and leggings and all the accessories. So thank you. you paint me into the again. Are we having a good time out there today? Are we having a good time? Give it up for the contestants so far, please. I'd like to invite to the stage Nanaba Joy Little. How cute, how cute you are. Oh my goodness. She's so beautiful. She is from the Diné Nation. She's wearing a traditional Diné dress. 
She is wearing a traditional velvet three-quarter sleeve shirt and cotton floral gold skirt made by Crystal Begay. Her hair is tied in a traditional Navajo bun wrapped in a yarn hair tie. Her sash belt was made by her great-grandmother, Connie So, and her belt is a traditional Navajo control belt. Her necklace includes a three-strand turquoise necklace and a traditional squash blouse from the coral form. She also wears turquoise bracelets in her right and left wrists. Tucked in her sash belt is a cotton scarf worn by many Navajo women. Lastly, Nanaba is wearing traditional leather moccasins. <laughs> Nanaba. Nanaba. Come on, come on. Let them see your shoes. Come around. There you go, there you go. She's so cute, right? Nanaba, come stand over here. She's like, hey, adios. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come stand over here. Melts my heart. She's so cute. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Nanaba Joy Little. Give a round of applause. How many years has Nanaba been doing this now? This is her second year. So last year was her first year and she got so tired she fell asleep. <laughs> Up next we have contestant number eight, Carmen Growing Thunder. <laughs> Carmen is my cousin, but in our kinship system, she is my little sister. She is a Cinnaboyne Sioux and Taos Pueblo. Today she is wearing a jingle dress. Um, so traditionally, uh, the jingle dress comes from the woodland areas, the Anishinaabe people. Um, there is traditionally 365 tin cones. These are actually snuff can lids um, rolled into a cone figure. And so traditionally, we're supposed to wear 365 of them on dress to represent a prayer for each day of the year. And it makes a beautiful, beautiful sound. It almost sounds like rain. Um, can you give us a jingle so we can hear it? <laughs> She's like, that's as good as it's getting this morning. <laughs> um, so the jingle dress dance is actually a part of a traditional ceremony meant for healing um, because of those prayers that are said and the prayers that are danced. And so it made its way, it was uh, gifted to tribes and eventually made its way to the, uh, the Sioux people on the plains and that's how it came to our people. She is wearing a dentalium cape. Do you want to turn around so we can see your cape? So the dentalium shells actually come from the coast. Uh, so this was something that we gained through trade. Um, she's wearing a sparkly belt. <laughs> she's got fully beaded moccasins and leggings. These were created by my grandmother, Joyce Growing Thunder. Yes, beautiful, fully beaded. Uh, these are traditional Cinnaboyne designs. She's got beautiful hair ties. She also has otter wraps to lengthen her braids. Uh, she's got a beautiful choker with a choker drop. Beautiful earrings, a um, headband, and some plumes in her hair. And she's got some paint on her face, because she is beautiful. <laughs> you want to take a few steps forward and give him some smiles? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Carmen. I have two contestants next. These are sisters, and the little one's scared, so she can come out with her sister. This is Maria Lopez and Kaiwa Wall. Maria is the older sister. Can you step up here, close to the front? They're wearing beautiful rug dresses, and they have their traditional moccasins on, and they're, you can really see that they protect their legs and stuff, so when they would be out walking or and stuff, they, they'd be t protected from snakes and what else, cactus, things like that. So she has a lot of... Um, beautiful jewelry on. She has a squash blossom necklace and some coral necklaces underneath that and fancy, fancy concho belt, beautiful bracelets and jewelry and rings. And she told me she gets to carry this eagle feather and that's special to her. So it was her most important thing she had to say to me when I was talking to her. Um, her little sister has a beautiful woven rug dresses and I was asking her if these were in her family and she said yes they all get to use these rug dresses 
so they must be passed on down through <clears throat> different family members. So she has a beautiful coral necklace, and she has a, a cute little concho belt with a heart on the her necklace and bracelets, and she also has her traditional moccasins on, and they're woven belts. Do you girls want to turn around so we can see your hair? They have their hair tied in traditional Navajo buns. <laughs> Here, you're so cute. Good job. So they're just as beautiful and from behind as they're in front. Thank you, girls. Beautiful, beautiful. Can I jump in and acknowledge how beautiful they're beautiful. I wanted to jump in and acknowledge how beautiful their moccasins are. So how it was explained to me and um, I I'm married into Danae. Um, so you have to excuse me if I get something wrong. I'm an in-law. <laughs> um, but it was explained to me that when, um, traditionally when you see them, their legs wrapped so thick with so much hide, it was a symbol of wealth. You know, to have that much um, hide meant that they come from a wealthy family. So they got really thick wraps around their legs. And I just want to acknowledge that. That's beautiful to see. All right. Thank you, girls. Can we give them a big smile one more time? <laughs> All right, thank you, girl. All right, can we have all the girls kind of squeeze up towards the front so everybody can get a look at you? And we have contestants one all the way through nine over here. Beautiful smiles. Okay, so the judges are looking them over again. It's a hard decision. Wow. Do you do archery? Yes. How long have you been doing archery? A year. Nice. Who's teaching you? Uh, we call him Mr. H. Mr. H. All right. So I really like your top. That's beautiful. Did you your family bead that? Was it? Who was it? Uh, my mother. Oh, nice. You did a beautiful job. It's. I bet it sounds pretty too, because you have tinklers on there too, huh? What did you um, run around in it, or do you do any traditional dances? Uh, no, this is actually my first communion dress. Oh, lovely! It's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Okay. How old are you? Uh, nine. She's nine. Okay. We'll start out with how old you are. Thirteen. Okay, and I remember you from last year. No, you weren't in here last year? Oh, did you have a sister in here last year? Oh, you look so familiar. Maybe I know you from somewhere. I really like your necklace. She has a really nice um, traditional old squash squash little necklace with silver beads. It's beautiful. So what grade are you going to be going into? Eighth. Eighth grade, wow. <coughs> All right. So I'm over here talking to the sisters. And one is nine and the oh, other yeah. is three. So you're nine years old. What grade are you going to? Fourth? I jumped the gun. I jumped the gun. Third. I'm getting, I'm getting it all mixed up now. All right. And so your little sister is three years old. Wow. So you're going into third grade. So what is your favorite subject in school? I have, uh, yeah. I have three and two. Reading? Oh, reading! Good, yeah. good. What's your favorite book? Okay. Indian book? <laughs> Me too. Me too. I can go with And Carmen over here is a softball player. I don't know anything about sports, but tell us what you do with softball. I pitch, I play everywhere, and um, it's a fun sport for me because you get your body going and you get really strong. <laughs> Her mom was telling me earlier that she's got one really muscular arm. <laughs> and none of us, 
Yeah. How old are you? Oh, I just didn't know it was Oh, oh I didn't know there was a third. No, not, there's not. not. I just wanted to. No. <laughs> she is two years old. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm okay. <laughs> and Miss Peyton Ray, what grade are you going into? Seventh. Seventh grade. And what's your favorite thing about school? Good. She's got a very soft spoken voice. <laughs> and what about you? How old are you? No? I'd like your pink lipstick. She is four years old. What about you? How old are you? I'm six years old. She is six years old. Wow. And what about you, my dear? Thirteen. Eight. Are you going to be ready for high school? No. <laughs> How long have you been coming to market? Um, this is actually my first year, but um, my dad over there is Dana, so he's been coming here for a while. Um, her dad is Dana Warrington, who has a booth right here. <laughs> Everybody, let's give Dana a round of applause. Dana won a major award for Diverse Arts this year. Um, so fantastic pieces if you get a chance. He is a porcupine co-worker. So get a chance, go see his boot. So what's your favorite subject in school? Science. Science? I love it, I love it. Oh, are we ready? Okay.